Coach O, men's tennis coach of the Air Force Academy, thanks for taking the time to join us and uh, answer some fans' questions today. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. I'm just really, really excited to be here. Like I said, uh, it's the most exciting thing I've done in the last two months. So we're ready to go for it, absolutely. <laughs> it would have been a lot more exciting had you had a season, and we'll get to that in a minute. But first off, I want to ask the question, how are you? How are members of your family? Is everyone doing okay? Yes, uh, so far so good. We're staying healthy. Meg and I have been uh, quarantining. Uh, I think we're winning that competition right now. Um, I went out for the first time today. Um, kind of in public for in a long time. And uh, it, you know, it's good to see people taking precautions. I think that's really important. Um, my, my kids are all in state, uh, in different parts of the state, and they're all healthy, and they're doing well too. So um, we're all healthy here. So exactly what have you been doing? I mean, you, you, most coaches say they're bored during this time. How have <laughs> you been using your time, I guess? Yeah, uh, one thing to know about myself, I, I'm never bored, so I always will find something to do. But uh, what I've been able to do with the, the extra time that I've had is something I've always wanted to do. And that's really dig into the history of the program. Um, all the way back, you know, we started in the 60s uh, through the 70s and 80s. I, I've done a, a massive amount of uh, research on just, uh, you know, players that have played for us and matches that we've had, looking through old archives, um, kind of creating my own history project essentially of the Air Force men's tennis team. And it's, it's taken me along a lot of different paths that I've, I've, I've loved reaching out to folks that I've never talked to before, um, you know, made some, some connections and brought people back, you know, that haven't been involved in the program for a while uh, to, and my goal is to ask them, you know, 10, 20, 30 years later, what is it that you remember, you know, about your experience you know, when you're on the tennis team, what, what things, you know, still are with you. And, and maybe, it, it, maybe there's a little, a little nugget or, or two I can take from each of these alumni and help share with our guys. And so it's been a really fun project for me. Um, you know, I'm a numbers guy and I love data. And so I've got all that in there. I, I can get some old videos and stuff. And so I'm, I'm, I'm making some highlight reels, sending them out to alumni of old matches and just trying to kind of rekindle some memories and, and uh, find out what sticks with guys after all these years. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah, and I'm sure that will uh, rekindle a little bit more excitement. And I know that Nick Arseniak and Troy Garnhart probably uh, think you're coming after their jobs, no? <laughs> no, no, no. A absolutely not. Uh, they do an awesome job. I'm just – I mean, I, 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 I take the record books that are basically in the, the storage closet – and I'm bringing them home and I've just got my whole home office set up of just all the matches and trying to figure out which ones were really, really memorable. Uh, when there are no videos or records of that, I'm trying to yeah, just find out what people, what, what sticks with them after all these years. That's great to hear. Um, this was such an odd season for, for everybody, but for you, especially as, as a spring sport and the fact that you were going to host the Mountain West Men's Tournament Championship at the academy was going to be exciting. The weather was perfect for it, which is something many people yeah. were worried about. Didn't get to have it. Just kind of take us through that whole thing. First, when you found out how you told your players that the season was over, no championships, nothing. Yeah, it was uh, two months ago tomorrow, um, you know, March 12th, when we were, we were on the road or about to go on the road uh, to play a non, our last non-conference uh, matches against Northern Arizona, Louisiana, Lafayette. You know, the night before, um, things were starting to cancel across professional sports and other conferences. So we, we were worried that things were going to come pretty quick, but we, we really had no idea how fast and how permanent it was going to be. So, uh, yeah, that was a tough meeting. You know, brought all, all our guys in there. They were actually dressed up, ready to go down to the bus. They were in their team sweats for the flight, and they had their bags packed. We were in the locker room. We were ready to go. And you know, instead of telling them, hey, let's get on the bus and let's go, we had to tell them, no, we're not going and our season's canceled. It was really, really hard. You know, it felt probably the most uh, sting, you know, for our, our senior, Matt Galvin, you know, just having a great, great season. And, you know, that was the end of his career, unfortunately. Um, so our guys don't get a fifth year. Mac um, and Santi, our two seniors, they're going to pilot train, you know, so – that right then was the end of their collegiate tennis career. And I, you know, I was the one that had to break that news and that's, it's never the way you want it to go. You want to be on the court, you want to be playing and you want to have some control over that. 
you know, you, as an athlete, um, it was all taken out of their hands. And I just, I really feel bad for them. How did they both take it and how, were they quick to adapt to, okay, now I've got to concentrate because graduation was, was a month yeah. earlier too. So how did they handle that? They handled it really well. You know, um, the, the thing about the academy that I think is just so different and what I've seen is, is that these guys have so much to look forward to. And so it's not like their lives were in. I mean, it was like, okay, um, dang, you know, I, 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 and I know they were disappointed, but I also know that the next thing on their plate became graduation. And that is one of the biggest days in their lives. And so um, there's just something, the next thing to look forward to, you know, they get their, their diplomas, they get their jobs, they get to go to pilot training. And then, you know, for our juniors, they get their class rings, they get to become seniors. So um, our processes here and, and the way we're set up, is just, there's always something next. And so that's, I think that helped them because they had that to look forward to, even though it, it was for a while uncertain how they were gonna graduate, but they did it and they made it happen. It was great. Yeah, it certainly was. Um, how did you take, you know, the, the tennis tournament not happening and the fact that the weather was good? I mean, it's all crying over spilled milk, so to speak, but there's still, there's still some, some emotions that you have to get through before you can move on, don't you? Yeah, you know, we, man, we really wanted to host this year. Um, we've been, you know, it's 2013 was the last time we hosted and I felt like we were really in a good position you know, with the roster, with the way guys were playing and just the confidence we had. Um, so I know we were going to be dangerous and the guys felt it, you know, you could see every day and every match we played, they were, they were getting better. And that was, uh, that was, yeah, it was taken away. And so that, that was hard. I mean, as the days were, were ticking it up until the conference tournament, I was in my mind like, okay, today we'd be playing, San Diego State. Today we'd be playing New Mexico. And in my mind, I was going through, hey, what would we be doing today on match day? And this is a week before the tournament, three days before the tournament. You know, today's our the banquet and, you know, we get the draw tomorrow. And I was going through all that. Um, so for me, I really felt it. I'm not sure so much about the players because they haven't been through it as much. And we have a lot of freshmen, so I've never seen it. But um, my hope is that we host the very next Mountain West tournament that there is. I don't know if, I mean, hopefully it'll be next year, but I hope that we get the opportunity to host the next tournament that we have because we are absolutely ready to do it. We'll get into next year in a moment, but I want to get to some of these fans' questions about you personally and your coaching. Um, what is your favorite part? I mean, having been an Air Force officer and a, and a pilot and everything, what's your favorite part about coaching cadets at the Air Force Academy? It's, it's the greatest challenge I've, I've personally ever had. And, you know, 11 years ago when I came into this job, there is no way I would have ever said that that was going to be the case. I, I, I did not think that there was um, the depth and, you know, the, the complexity to coaching college athletics that there was. And, and so to me, it's just, it's such a unique challenge um, every single day. You know, I'm tested as a leader. I'm, I'm, I'm stretched, I'm pulled, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm pushing the limits of, of my comfort level of how to interact with people and how to deal with situations. And then on top of that, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to mold and develop these young men um, into the officers on my team. And so uh, it's just, it's the greatest challenge I've ever had. I mean, I've done a lot of cool things um, and I have a lot that I can look back on and draw from, but this this to me is just every day I go into work. It's just it is the biggest challenge, and that's what gets me up and gets, gets me excited. What do you what gives you satisfaction out of that? Like, is it when they graduated? Is it is it seeing them perform better on the court? What is it in your mind? You know, I I think it's uh, you know the, the personal interactions you have with your players are very valuable, and the relationships that you make. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of satisfaction that when, when, you, when you do get calls from guys a year down the road after they graduate or, or five years down the road, and they, they remind you of something that, that you said to them, you know, on the court or maybe in the office or, you know, while you're recruiting them, you know, those things are very satisfying. 
um, you know, aside, aside from, you know, the, the playing. But I, I, I do really enjoy watching guys problem solve in tennis because I, I really think it's, it's one of the greatest sports where as an individual person, you're the one responsible. I mean, there's nobody else out there. You're on display and you have to put it all out there as a tennis player. And so to watch players grow and learn through those failures, you know, mostly um, is, is how you do it. And to me, that, that gives me great satisfaction seeing guys go from, from folks that, I mean, I remember a player one day, it, he was number eight in my lineup and he's one of the best players I've ever coached. Uh, but, but he was a freshman. He was number eight in the lineup. And I did not expect to use him that day. But there was an injury, and then there was something else that happened. And I looked at him, and I said, you're going in. And he, he I mean, he got, gave me the, the biggest deer in the headlights look. And he said, coach, I'm not ready. And I did not expect that. And so I said, okay, we'll go to the next guy. And, but that moment for him was – it was eye-opening to him um, because he knew he wasn't ready. And so he did everything he could to become ready. And when the next time came for him, he stepped up. And, and to watch him grow through that process, you know, by the time he graduated, he was all Mountain West player. Um, and, uh, yeah, th those are things that are really satisfying to me, to see that confidence um, develop in the players. Yeah. This is a question I'm not sure I understand, so I hope you do. Um, <laughs> what matters more in tennis than tennis? Yeah, like I said, you know, tennis is, it's one of the, the best sports that tests all parts of a person, you know, physically uh, and mentally, it, it, it cuts, it cuts everything away. You know, you, you're not, I mean, you are out there on your own and there's nobody else that can save you, you know, and so I think what matters the most is belief, um, belief in yourself and belief that, you uh, that, that you can go accomplish it. You know, it's also one of the, the stranger sports where you lose probably half, almost half the points that you play. And so dealing, learning how to deal with failure over and over and over again, but still yet win the match, you know, which is the goal. That's really hard. And so I think you have to be, you have to have a, a great belief in yourself that no matter how difficult things look in front of you, um, you still have the, the guts and the grit to push through it and you can accomplish it. So that's, that's what I think. Yeah, that, that's a great answer. And I think that brings us to kind of the recruiting portion of our questions. And, and um, because you're looking for a special type of, of, of player, not just a tennis player, because they have the military and they have to have the academics. So with all of that comes into being an, an, a, a student, a cadet athlete at the Air Force Academy, tell us how it works with recruiting. How do you, how do you narrow them down? Again, that, that's another challenge, and, and I love it. Evan and I were, were just on the phone, you know, doing our, our recruiting update with each other, and, you know, we're dealing with the class of 2025. So these are juniors in high school. And we've got a list right now that's, we've probably whittled it down quite a bit. Um, we've got maybe a dozen guys. Um, we know we're not going to get that dozen. We're going to end up with probably four. But we start with such a, a wide net. You know, we have to. And you, you, you just have to work through, you know, how, how, how much information you can get from these, these, you know, these high school kids. Um, and that's difficult when you can't right now go out and watch them play. You can't meet them, you know, in, in their homes and meet their families. So we're having to be pretty creative. But, um, you know, the questions that we ask, uh, I think hopefully we're asking the right questions that tell us a lot about them. And, and what we want to find are guys that, um, you know, have a, have a growth mindset that are, they don't know it all, you know, and, and hopefully they, they really realize that they're 17 years old, you know, and so we want to, we want to get people who come into an environment that, you know, they're looking to be around, you know, excellence wherever they are, you know, whether it's academics or on the leadership side or the athletics, but they, they, they seek that out and that they want to improve. And those are the things that we look for when we recruit, you know, someone who says, Oh, you know, 
they, they see a situation and yep, that's how I would do it. Or yeah, I already know that. Um, you know, they, they, well, I want someone who is receptive to coaching and who can learn and who, who is very open that, uh, Hey, I don't have all the answers, you know, as, as a young 17, you know, high school student, I, I'm, I'm, I'm seeking information from my coach, from my instructors. And those are the kind of people that we, we know will do well here. Um, the tennis part of it, yeah, there's a whole other side of how we evaluate, but those character issues, um, we have to find out, and we, we try to get those right as much as we can. To follow up, uh, before I get to another question from the list here, is you were a recruit. <laughs> mm -hmm. Were you the kind of recruit that you're looking for, or did you grow from that process? Uh, the reason I ask is, is there room? Is there some some play there in the fact that, okay, maybe this kid doesn't get it right now, but I believe he can. Right. I, I believe that, uh, you know, with the right mentorship and, and the right mindset of, of the recruiter, the player that, yeah, you, you can grow and you can change, you can develop. And, and I would, I'd love to be that person for somebody. I, I feel like coach Gugat was that for me. You know, I, I think I, I came in, um, just thinking back to my time, I, I had a pretty rebellious time when, you know, when I was in high school and even sometimes as a cadet and coach Gugat was the mentor that, you know, helped straighten me out in certain situations and, you know, told me that those, those things and, you know, not to worry about trying to be cool or, you know, trying to do it is popular, you know, do what's right. And um, I, I think that, that, Certain people can change, but they have to want to change. You know, I, I know that um, I've missed the boat on, on, on some kids, unfortunately, in the past, but we, we try, to, try to find the right ones that are, that are open to that and, and, you know, want to live by these values. Okay, there's a question here of UTR. I didn't know what that means, the universal mm -hmm. tennis rating, but you know about it. And is there a minimum UTR that you have, to, you have to be at in order to be recruited to play at the academy? No, there's not a minimum, um, but that, but, but it, universal tennis rating is a very valuable um, measuring stick that has become uh, just really widely used throughout the whole sport of tennis. Um, and it, it balances, you know, ideally your geographic region, your, um, your age, your gender, and it puts everybody on one, one scale to measure your, um, you know, your ability in tennis. And so what we're trying to do is find guys that are competitive, that will help us be competitive in the Mountain West Conference. You know, that, that's, our, that's our absolute number one goal is to, is to win the Mountain West Conference. And to do that, um, UTR helps us evaluate where a recruit is. Um, just for an example, like Roger Federer, Rafa Nadal, 16 UTR, you know, they're way up there. Um, a lower division one men's tennis player would be nine or 10 UTR. So there's decimal points in there that, you know, we are looking for a higher level recruit so that when we play UNLV, Boise State, New Mexico, they have 13s, 12 fives, 13 O's, maybe 13.5s on their team. We want to have the talent level that matches up to that. And, uh, and so we recruit a range. I would say we recruit between, you know, if you're a junior in high school, we look for at least a 10.0, maybe 10.5. And you're working your way up to 11. We want you to be, you know, roughly 12-ish when you're on our team because we're playing 12 fives, 13s. Um, once you get to college though, there, there's absolutely no reason why you need to worry about your UTR, you know I mean? From my perspective, you go out and you compete for your team, you do the best you can. But to be noticed by a coach, yeah, the, the UTR is important. Yeah. Um, the next question has to do with walk-ons. And mm -hmm. um, I'd first like to preface it that there are not a lot of students at the academy compared to other mm -hmm. universities. There's 4,000 cadets, you know, if that at a given time. But uh, the question is, is there, is there room for walk-ons or do you have to be a recruited athlete to play on your team? Uh, absolutely, there's room for walk-ons. And, you know, it, I typically will have um, a walk-on on the roster every, every year. 
that doesn't mean one every year, but just one through the course of that four years. So um, I think it brings a lot of diversity and it, it helps us, you know, just, I mean, as an example, Jason Wild is a walk-on and he's on our team right now. And he was a really valuable member of our, of our season this year. You know, he got to play in a tournament in the fall for us. And, you know, Jason, I did not recruit Jason. Um, he, he started playing tennis when he was 14. You know, he, he played baseball and his whole life. And then he, he's a freshman in high school in, in Texas. And he, I think his brother said, why don't you come try out? And so, so Jason's an example. I have a lot of, um, like I said, there's usually one on the roster um, throughout the whole time that, that I've been there. And they, they bring a lot. We have had, I've had team captains that have been walk-ons. Good to know. Maybe you're out there looking. I don't know if you run out to Mitchell Hall and look for, look for people that look like they might be tennis well, players. I mean, we, we do tryouts, you know, we, we typically have a tryout and, you know, it's, they're, it's really hard for them to, <clears throat> excuse me, Ron, um, to make the roster to play, you know, to, to have the, <clears throat> the talent level to compete against guys that were recruited that have been playing since they were eight, you know, even a national level tournament. So, um, to play in the lineup, that is more difficult to be on the roster, absolutely possible. I know it's hard to tell at the moment in the current crisis what's going on around the world, but in your mind and, and what you know, the knowledge that you have, what does the upcoming tennis season look like for 2021? Yeah, I've spent a lot of time uh, trying to get as much information as I can, talk to coaches, talk to leadership within the, the ITA, the Interclusion Tennis Association, listen to what our, our CEO is saying. Um, and it's, you know, I mean, almost daily where I'm trying to get information on what they are seeing. And so the coaches are, are trying to, you know, create ideas and, and, and that essentially um, lay the groundwork for how the season's going to look. You know, we were just on Friday, um, our ITA CEO said, hey, the fall season, we're going to have it. You know, we're going to do everything we can to have a fall season. It's going to look different. You know, we're going to probably not have teams flying all over the country like we were before. Um, find ways that you can create tournaments locally and whether that's mixing in all the different divisions, you know, playing schools that maybe are above or below your, you know, your division or um, even bringing in somehow we create events that aren't just college events, but what we wanna do is we wanna give the student athletes opportunities to compete. And so that's what the fall season is all about. Um, so I think we're trying to be really creative um, to look for those, for those answers. And I, I think, you know, I think we'll be back on the court practicing in August, that's my goal. And that's what I told our guys today on our team meeting, is be ready to come back and practice in August. We'll see what's different about that. I know there will be differences. Um, in our spring season, you know, we've been working with the Mountain West to, uh, you know, to hold our schedule together as much as we can. Um, we haven't made decisions on, you know, the full Mountain West schedule or the tournament, but we know there will be some impacts and we know um, we'll, we'll have some restrictions. But I think we'll, I think we're at the Air Force Academy, we're in a good position, um, you know, with, with what we've done as a, as a university, um, you know, since this happened moving forward and, and just, I think we're in a good spot. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, and you also, your team went through quite a bit of adversity this year. Uh, some, you know, the people close to the program know what we're talking <clears> about. But do you feel that you, in some ways, are uniquely positioned to move into your season during this time of adversity and uncertainty? Do you feel like maybe you learned some things from the abbreviated season that you have last spring that'll, that'll help you? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, what... What we went through in the fall, you know, losing a lot of our guys, and then um, essentially bringing up guys from our club team to fill in our roster, and then bringing guys back on our team, you know, to, to be part of this, this new group. Um, I think we learned a lot about ourselves and uh, how to, you know, communicate better and, um, really set a goal and just work every day toward it. You know, that was probably the, the best thing that we did. This time, you know, the last two months, you know, what we've tried to do is, is continue that communication. Even though we're not on the tennis court with them, you know, for two or three hours a day, we're, 
we're trying to stay as connected as we can. I think that we haven't lost anything as a group, you know, how, how close the guys are together. It's, it's as great as I've, I've seen it with any of my teams. So I feel like, um, yes, we are in a good position moving forward. I, I also think that, that the way our school is at the Air Force Academy, what we expect of our cadets, and even if they don't have it when they, when they come in as freshmen, what, what, they, what we expect them to learn is, I mean, how to deal with adversity, you know, how to deal with uncertainty and how to, to manage expectations. And, you know, you think you're going to be doing this, but you're doing that and you got to deal with it. I mean, cause that's what we're training them to do to be officers is, you know, you're going to have a plan, but then it, the plan is not going to be what you, what you execute. And so that's exactly what we're going through right now. So I believe that just the, the way our institution works and, you know, the, the values that we teach our cadets every single day, I believe that, that as a school, all of our student athletes are in a good position to, to, handle, to handle the situation. Yeah, you pretty much answered the next question. It's just what, what gives you that confidence in the cadets? Mm. Is, it, is it the learning system? Is it the kind of young men that they are? Uh, I mean, you got Paul coming back as an upperclassman, some of your upperclassmen coming back. Do you fully expect them to be the leaders they need to be on this team? Um, for sure. Paul and Jamie, we named as our team captains. So <clears throat> three years ago, no, they were not ready. You know, when they come in as freshmen, most, most of these guys aren't ready for these challenges but we throw a lot at them in their four years. And you know, what these guys have seen in the three years they've been on the team and, and in their squadrons has, I believe, prepared them really well to handle the situation. I can already tell they've stepped up. I mean, they, they were stepping up at the end of last season and, and now they're, they're absolutely ready for the role that we've given them to be our team captains. Uh, and yeah, I, I think that that's the goal for all the cadets that we bring in is you know, we know they're not ready to be second lieutenants on I day, you know, June 25th, there's no way. I mean, they're just starting basic training. So it's a four year process. And so I, I think, yeah, the, the system that we have at our school, all the pieces that we have at the Air Force Academy helps develop them to be ready for situations like this. Such a challenge you have ahead of you with this next season, not knowing what it looks like and things really changing <laughs> daily here. But what are you most looking forward to about the, you know, 2021 year? You know, I, I hope we get a, a, a relatively full season because these guys, uh, they tasted success last year and it came in some really uncertain places and from some people that had not experienced it. And so that excitement is on the team. You know, it is there and uh, it was cut short. Um, and so what we're trying to do is, is come back at that same level, you know? And so I want to see us when we get back in school, you know, in August that they come out to practice with that same urgency and that same excitement because, you know, they, they felt it, they know what it was like, you know, we, I mean, we had, uh, I mean, we got to play the number one team in the country which was just an amazing experience for the guys. And then the next day we play Army and we, we came off the court feeling great, you know? And, and so we carried that into our next weekend. We won a double header and, and that's where we left off. And we were just about to start our conference season. I know we were gonna do well. And because of the confidence that the guys had, the belief they had in themselves. And so that's what I'm looking forward to next year is seeing them continue that and just raising that bar, you know, every, every time we go out and practice in every match. Yeah. I don't know who, I don't know who been, they submitted this last question, but uh, they're, they're apparently looking forward to something as well. Um, <laughs> it says, when will coach O be getting a tattoo that's cooler than coach Urbina's? Now, Evan, Evan, you told me has, yeah. a, has like a sleeve he's working on, mm -hmm. right? So I'm not sure yeah. where you're at on tattoos. What, 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 uh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely not in competition with Evan um, for tattoos. I, I will not get any ink. Um, I think probably this, as wild as I'll get is probably grow my hair out. I think that's as much as I'll do. So um, definitely no tattoos in my future. <laughs> Evan, you've been growing your hair out because of this pandemic. You can't even get to the barber. I guess maybe they're open now. Well, 
you know, I, that was my excuse. I always keep my hair short. And the day that the pain, you know, we, we close things down the base, I'm like, well, I, I can't go get my hair cut. But I just found out the barbershop I'm, has been open the whole time. So I've had no excuse. But, uh, but yeah, I think I'm going to let it grow a little bit. Oh, that's awesome. Coach O, thanks for taking the time. Thanks, as always, for being so honest with your answers. And uh, I hope uh, this really gave some insight into your fans and supporters. And just one last thing, if, if there's people out there that, you know, love your program, is there any way that they can support you during this time? What would you like them to do for you? Yeah, I, I think um, supporting college athletics as a whole for all of us. I think, you know, that's the biggest thing. You know, the folks that, that have kids that are student athletes or are fans of college athletics, I, I just really think now is the time to, you know, to do as much as you can to show that support um, through the college presidents or the athletic directors. I think college athletics is going to be uh, in a tough spot, you know, I, but I, I think we, we have to have, um, you know, the right level of support from fans, but also the leadership within, within our organizations to, to do this correctly, um, you know, because it's, it's just such a difficult situation, but I, I don't want to see these opportunities taken away from student athletes because it's such a valuable experience, you know, to, to get to play college athletics. And so if you're a fan, just let, let, let the, the folks that are making decisions know that. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks coach. Thanks for your time. And uh, we'll see you around. Hopefully we'll be getting back on base here pretty soon. Yeah, absolutely. Brian, thank you so much for what you're doing. Really appreciate it.